Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen today talking about fuel mechanics in game, how they plan to work in the future in regards to fuel intakes, refineries and operating ranges and sort of how they work now. In Alpha 3.1 other than snubs all ships have a hydrogen fuel tank and most ships also have a quantum fuel tank as well. The ship's thrusters consume fuel stored in the hydrogen fuel tank and convert it into thrust with a small draw from the power plant. When in quantum travel thrusters use fuel contained in the quantum fuel tank instead. A common misconception is that fuel is only used during boost or afterburner. Actually, fuel was intended to be consumed during use of thrusters at any time. Most ships have a fuel intake that generates fuel from the environment. Fuel should usually regenerate faster than what standard maneuvering burns while in space. Sustained maneuvers involving boost or afterburner, however, especially while in atmosphere will consume fuel faster than it can be regenerated. Stopping these maneuvers will typically refill the fuel bar, although most ships will need to be moving though because they need to get the fuel scooped in to refill that bar. If a ship is left running when landed, you will return to find that it has consumed fuel uh, in most situations. If you run out of either type of fuel, the only way to refuel your ship currently is by visiting a Cry Astro station or by filing an insurance claim at an ASOP terminal. Eventually, you're going to be able to request fuel at anywhere via service beacons. So how is fuel then used to generate thrust? Fuel intakes scoop natural gases from the environment and funnel them into the ship. To get the most amount of gas into your ship, seek out areas of concentrated gas. Using your fuel intakes in regular space may scoop limited quantities of gas or none at all in some situations. These gases are converted into plasma. Fuel intakes will do a basic conversion on a limited range of gas types. Refineries will provide more conversion options of more gas types. Converted plasma is stored in the fuel tank, previously called the hydrogen fuel tank. These tanks can only store one type of plasma at a time. When thrust is needed, plasma pumps through the power plant and is converted and agitated into energized plasma. The energized plasma is funneled into the thrusters, thrust is produced and the ship moves appropriately. Hydrogen is the most common element in space in the game. All ships can use hydrogen to power their thrusters, but it is not the only type of gas that can be converted. Some ships can harvest and convert varying types of gas that when refined provide additional benefits, such as increased efficiency or reduced emissions. You can only store one type of plasma in each fuel tank, so pick wisely. If you wish to change types, you must purge the tank before refilling, which is not recommended in deep space. So it's good there to know that there are going to be lots of different fuel types, some of which will make you more stealthy, uh, potentially. Refineries are the key to converting other gases into usable fuel. While fuel intakes do a passable conversion job, refineries take it to the next level. They can be found on a wide range of ships, like the 100 series, the Freelancer Durs, and uh, with the Starfarer as well. As part of the refinery gameplay, you can select what type of fuel to scoop and where it will end up, provided that you have a ship with multiple fuel tanks, such as the Starfarer. You will need to monitor the situation as gas concentrations will vary by location and even within the same location, you could have totally different gas makeups in little areas. The current plans is to have gas clouds in space to be a mixture of gases like ammonia, hydrogen, nitrogen. So they give some examples as well of how they see the density of clouds affecting how you do this fuel collection gameplay. Ammonia might be the most efficient dense fuel that you um, can see in this gas cloud, so you might be tempted to scoop it, but it's only 9% of that particular cloud that you're looking at composition, whereas nitrogen could be 40% of the cloud, which means it could take you just over four times as long to get the same amount of ammonia plasma as nitrogen plasma. On the other hand, ammonia plasma is a higher grade and sells for more. So they're basically just literally different types of mineable fuels in space and gases in space. Quantum fuel is going to remain as is. It will only be consumed during quantum travel and refilled at designated stations like Cry Astro. One of the major noticeable changes in coming patches will be that players will no longer have the ability to regenerate or scoop fuel 
by default. It's going to be a conscious choice and not all ships are going to be able to do it. Service beacons, the Vulcan and the Starfarer will allow for the refueling of ships anywhere at any time. So you can call for help. You can also go to a Cry Astro service or dock with another ship and get refueling there. So not all ships are going to have fuel intakes. Some don't have one, nor will have the option to equip one, and some will just start with them, and some will have refineries as well. Typically, short-range combat ships will not have intakes nor the ability to equip them. Long-range combat ships, um, exploration ships, industrial transport, most support, and competition ships will, in most cases, have intakes. Some ship families, such as the Aurora and 300 series, have variants that also come with a fuel intake by default, while the rest of the series can equip one if you procure it separately or transfer it from another ship. Furthermore, just because a ship does not have a fuel intake does not mean it can't operate in deep space. There are no hard restrictions in place to prevent it. You will just need to consider your actions more carefully. You could leave enough fuel to return, call for a refuel, or make your journey a one-way trip. Fuel intakes and refineries can be of different types and qualities too. Some may allow you to scoop larger ranges of gases, a particular type of gas more efficiently, and they have the same grades A to D as other items do as well. I am much more excited that there are different types of gas to mine now and to be converted into different types of fuel effectively. Yeah, having fuel that's of lower emission and we might get different fuel quality types that allow us to go faster or be more agile potentially. A good amount of information was in that fuel mechanics post and I will link the full post down below. A lot of it I couldn't really compress down because it was quite important. But what do you think about that going forward with fuel mechanics? Is that what you expected? Is that what you like? Do you want multiple types of fuel like this? It does make it a lot more interesting for the mining of the fuel with uh, the Starfarer and what f fuels you can bring with you with the Vulcan and that sort of stuff and lots more choice when it comes to gameplay for ships choosing the fuels that they use. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway for Star Citizen. For this April, it's a massive salvage ship, the Aegis Reclaimer, provided by our featured app, MyRadar. MyRadar is a free weather app that also includes full-scale maps of the three moons of Crusader, including Yella, Selen, and Daemar. Users can scroll around the interactive maps and zoom in to the landscape to see the geography of those moons. My radar is available in the US, Europe, Japan, South Korea, and coming this summer to Australia. It is a real life weather app as well, so you can see the weather in your general area and in those countries too. It's available on iOS, Android, and Windows. Please check it out in the links below if you are interested. But to be in for a chance of that reclaimer, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos throughout April. Each video gives you another chance to win. Do you have any questions about Star Citizen, its development, gameplay mechanics, suggestions for videos, whatever, chuck them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. A special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. Ugh! If you're interested in becoming one of them, please find the links to Patreon as well as everything else we discussed down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.